So here we have it, our assertions as the headings with the procedures underneath that are going to help us to test that assertion. So our first assertion we've got is completeness and I've said we need a test to ensure that all transactions have been recorded. All the transactions that should be recorded. So how am I going to test that? Let's go back to the summary to see where I'm going to start. Where do they leave the transaction out? They leave it out of the journal, out of this list over here. So if it's not in that list, can I start with that list to see that it's not there? No, because it's not there. But what do I know must be there? I know that all of these source documents that prove risks and rewards have transferred should be in the journal. So my starting point for completeness has to be with the source documents. Have all the source documents that should be recorded been recorded in the journal? And so you select your sample from the source documents and you trace it to the journal. Guys, you need to be specific here. What source document, what journal. So I'll give you a couple of examples. If you're doing revenue, the source document you want to test is the delivery note and the invoice. You want them together because, guys, the invoice date could differ from the delivery note date, but the delivery note date is the date risks and awards transferred. And then journal is obviously going to be your sales journal. For your purchases, think about it. What document shows risks and awards transferred? Your goods received note together with the invoice. And then it's obviously your purchase journal. And for wages, it is your employee contract because that shows that as soon as you've got a contract, you should actually have a costing in the journal and it's your payroll journal. But I also just want to stipulate, you don't necessarily need to do a document for your payroll. You could actually do a physical employee. So go and choose a few employees in the office and say, can I please go and see that they have a cost in the payroll journal to make sure that they have actually been recorded. So nice and simple. We then have another test which is very much linked to one of our controls for completeness. The best control for completeness is to have pre-numbered documents. So a substantive procedure we can physically do is to perform sequence testing of the specific source document number to identify missing document numbers and therefore missing transactions. Another thing also now where you don't necessarily have to look at document numbers is again if you have employee numbers where you can perform a sequence to identify any numbers that are not in sequence and therefore identify somebody who's potentially been left off. And while I'm doing sequence testing, guys, let's quickly do it from the opposite side. If I'm saying that there's a risk with occurrence having duplicate transactions, therefore they've recorded things they shouldn't, I can then do sequence testing here of the source document numbers or once again employee number and here even a little bit more risky bank account number and identify duplicates because there shouldn't be a duplicate employee number bank account number or source document number okay but Jump in the gun here, so let's move on to the occurrence assertion. And we need to develop tests to ensure that only valid transactions have been recorded. Maybe not only duplicates, there could be fictitious transactions. So 
once again, let's quickly go to our summary to see how we need to start our testing. Now we're saying that it's in this journal, but it's not on a source document. There's no source document, but they've recorded it in the journal. And it shouldn't be there, because what did we say? Only the source documents that are there and valid should be recorded. And all of those that are there and valid should be recorded. So he has a situation where there's no source document, but they recorded it. So he's sitting here, where they've got a journal, but there wasn't a document for it. And so we select our sample of transactions from the journal and we trace it to the source document because it's in the journal and I need to make sure there's a valid document to prove it should be there. Same thing, revenue, I'm selecting from the sales journal and I'm tracing it to the delivery notes and the invoice. Same for purchases from the purchase journal and I'm tracing it to the goods received notes and the invoice. And same for payroll, wages. I'm selecting it from the payroll journal and I'm tracing it to the employment contract. But again, I could also go to the physical employee. It's whichever preference I choose. Then I said, yeah, I can also go and inspect that that source document is authorized. So remember, for your revenue, you want to make sure that that delivery note has been signed by the customer, proving that risks and awards have transferred. It is now valid. For purchases, maybe you want to go all the way back up and make sure there is a purchase requisition that's been authorized, proving that this transaction should be taking place. Your employment contract authorized for your employees. And then, I've said here, yeah, inspect that the external source document is in the name of the entity. So guys, it's only if there is an external source document. So payroll, there's no external source document, so you would never do this. But for your revenue, when you receive the order from the customer, that must be to the specific business. For purchases, the invoice coming from the supplier must be addressed to them to prove that it does belong to this entity. And go back and have a look at the definition for occurrence and the risks. And you'll see there we need to make sure that it's authorized and that it pertains to the entity. So that's why this is a valid test. Okay, moving on to accuracy. We need to develop a test to ensure that the transaction is recorded at the correct amount. So now we need to understand how that rand amount is calculated. So if we just come down a little bit, I've, I've put some equations together. So let's do that. So for revenue, what times what gives you the rand amount? Quantity times by the price of the item sold gives you the rand amount. For wages, hours times by the rate gives you the rand amount. For purchases, quantity times by the price. So I've got to make sure that that rand amount is correct, but look at what makes it up. I've therefore got to test all of those two. So I'm going to select a sample of transactions from the journal and I'm going to trace it to the source document. And it's this source document that they use to record the journal. So for revenue, it's going to be the invoice. For purchases, the invoice. For salaries and wages, it's going to be your clock card and your employee contract. Then, once I've done this first test to get it to the document that I need, I need to Go one step further and agree the details on that source document to additional supporting documents. So I've got to first get the, the big document and then I've got to go and split it into more. So once I've got the invoice for revenue, 
I need to agree the quantity to something and the price to something to make sure they're correct so that I am happy that the random amount is right. So I'm going to agree the quantity to the delivery note and the price to the price list. So the details of the invoice are correct. For wages, I'm going to go and agree the hours to the clock card and the rates to the employment contract. And for purchases, I'm going to go and agree the quantity to the goods received notes and the price to the supplier price list. So I've tested the components that make up the rand amount by going to further supporting documents. And then once I'm happy that these make sense, I must make sure that when you add them up, they do equal the rand amount. So then I go and recalculate and cast that original source document because that's where the rand amount has come from. So I want to make sure, firstly, what they say, the rand amount in the journal matches to that document's rand amount. It does. Cool. Then I need to test that document. What are the components that make up the rand amount on that document? Trace them to further supporting documents and then add up that document to make sure that it does actually add up and the equations work out correctly. So quite a bit more work for your accuracy testing. Cut off. We need to develop a test to ensure that it is recorded in the correct period. So I've got a little timeline here. And I'm saying that the financial period is 1 Jan to 31 December 2018. Which means that my risk lies around the 2017 December to Jan, and then the 31 December 2018 to the Jan of 2019, because it's only around the year ends. So I'm going to focus on this actual year end and say, there's a risk that there are transactions recorded in December that actually relates to January 2019, the next year, and then there are going to be risks that there are transactions recorded in January 2019 that should have been recorded in December 2018. So those are where the risks lies with cutoff. It's over the year end and it's just a timing issue. So all I need to do is then test that these that I find are risky are recorded in the correct period. So all I have to do is select a sample of transactions recorded in the first two weeks of 2019 and the last two weeks of 2018 trace them to the source document to ensure that they're recorded in the correct period. Based on the details of that source document. When it risks and rewards transfer, okay. So for revenue, I'm going to trace it to the delivery notes because I want to see when did the customer sign taking responsibility. For purchases to the goods received note, when did we sign taking responsibility? And for wages, you're going to trace it to the clock card. What is the date that the service was actually performed? And guys, I say the first two weeks and the last two weeks because that gives me a decent bracket to work with as to where they could record in the incorrect period, but it's always linked to the lead time of the business. How often is it that they place an order and receive the goods? What's the period? And when they receive a sales order and they send the goods, what's their timing period? And if it's about a week, then your period could choose to be just one week. Two weeks gives us a decent amount of coverage and I would stick with that. 
Classification, nice and simple. We need to test that it's recorded in the correct account. So I'm going to select a sample from the journal and I'm going to trace it to the source document to see it's been recorded correctly based on the description. Guys, obviously the description will be in the source documents. Your biggest risks here, guys, are that expenses are recorded as assets. So like repairs and maintenance get capitalized to the specific assets. And so that's why you want to get the description on the source document to make sure it is an asset or an expense, depending on the details. Lastly, presentation and disclosure, guys. This has got nothing to do with the actual recording of the transaction in the accounting records. It's got to do with the financials. Has it been correctly presented in the face of the financials and disclosed in the notes to the financials? And it's a simple inspection of those financials for you to be able to see. So, one marker, easy, easy to get. Okay, let's move on to our account balances.